school's out. Kids are on the loose. Come in, 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 in. Adrift on the sand. Tensions rise in the heat. And a young boy in deep trouble. Seriously going under. The reality here is that people do drown if you're not watching the water. I don't want that to ever happen to me or any of us in the team. You get your, your run-of-the-mill rescues down here. But every now and then, you do one that's a real critical one. Oh, essential to Blue Rhino, fourth ramp. As quick as you possibly can. Looks like little kid, he's just dropped off the bank into the hole. Get straight in, mate. Go get him now. You're actually second-guessing whether you'll get to him in time. And when you leave the beach and hit the water, it just feels like everything slows down and you're watching people go down in front of you. And you're just hoping that they can just keep themselves above water for an extra five seconds so you can get to them. That's all you're hoping for. If I did lose someone, I reckon I'll be affected for a long time. And I'd hate, hate it to happen to me. rescues like that with the young kids. They're just defenceless, you know, against the ocean. I just felt awful when I got to him. He was so much closer than, than uh, people realise, I think. At Bondi, danger is never far away. But the lure of Australia's most famous playground is irresistible. Sun's shining and school's out. Bondi is crawling with toddlers, nippers, grommets, wax heads, and everything in between. Hey, go in, go in, 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 in. Hey, 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 hello, everybody. As the playground supervisors watch on, the next wave of surfers strut their stuff. But one young grommet hasn't even made it into the water. A shortcut across the rocks went very wrong. Walking out and sat came through and looked up at the surf and this place went very, very clumsy. Oh, there's a bit of a gash in your shit. There's worse, there's bleeding water. One there too? Oh, yeah. Is it all good? There's little sympathy from Brother Oliver. It's all like gooey. Well, that's funny ass. Yeah. What's your name? Hugo Pufflet. What's it? Hugo Pufflet? Yeah. Hugo <laughs> Pufflet. Yeah. You won't believe this kid's name. It's Hugo Pufflet. Hugo Pufflet. You're fair dinkum or joining us up. Dead serious. Mr. Pufflet gets the news. Thanks so much. While Hugo is out of action, home, Oliver home. is itchy for some fun. I want to go for a surf. So, uh, so can you just go in the normal way? Yeah. I put my foot where there wasn't a rock, so I just got nailed. A lot of blood. One grommet down. 
but there's still 30,000 people to worry about. Sun, surf, testosterone. As temperatures rise, so can tempers. Uh, I've got a fight breaking out of the truck when I was a child and there's a fight. Condo lifeguards to surf com, come in. We're in contact with the police now. A fight has been reported in the crowd at North Bondi. But, uh, he's probably going to need to send more than two police. Lifeguards focus on a group of agitated young men roaming the beach. School holidays, it is a melting pot. You know, you get everyone from all over Sydney coming to Bondi and, you know, not everyone gets along. And uh, it's just trying to contain the mayhem, really. Angry mob with angry haircuts. There's a lot of people just hanging around, so I'm guessing something can break out pretty soon. This guy here, eh? Yeah, yeah. I just had a big one. As police arrive, an informant points to the man in green shorts and claims he assaulted his brother. Hey, look. In the tent. Get on the camera. The man gets changed and packs up as police approach. Yeah, aqua shirt. That's him for sure. Cops have got him. It appears a straightforward arrest, but the informant walking behind decides to take justice into his own hands. With tempers on edge, the dog squad arrives. Police now have two men in custody. The first suspect, and now the man who accused him. He wasn't real smart, this guy behind me. He's gonna block someone right in front of the police. And uh, now everyone's here, dog squad, riot squad, whatever. Then the blame game begins. So you know him personally? No, we don't know him personally. He's just tried to jump my younger brother a few times. A bit disappointing, really. It's a beautiful day to be down at the beach, and, and this has to happen, and it takes us away from you know our main job of making sure people are right in the water. The first man was later released without charge. The man who accused him ended up being charged with assault himself. Right on, swimmers. In this car, you'll get hit by a board for sure. Lifeguard's attention turns back to where it belongs. Just a friendly reminder, just everyone here, you're just outside of the place. Work with us, everyone. Customer service agent, eh? Oh, I love that shit. I'm on a flight attendant. Hello, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a cruise cross check, arm dogs and cross check. I must have your complete attention. <laughs> As crowds peak in the afternoon, an unusually high tide swamps the foreshore. The high tide's actually making it difficult to travel up and down the beach, so we've got to spread ourselves out a little bit more and, and be really proactive this time of year. There's more rips than there is lifeguards on the beach. I think she needs to be rescued there. You want some help? Come here. At the notorious Backpackers Rip, it's Whippet's sixth rescue in 30 minutes. Come here. Swallow a bit of water. Oh. I can't swim forwards. You can't swim forwards? You be good at swimming backwards? Then what are you swimming in the rip for? I didn't know it was going for That's what the yellow sponge is there for. The rip is like the ocean's way of getting all the water that comes in when the waves come in back out to sea. So the water will come in on the shallow parts, just the sandbanks, and then it'll form a deep trough and, and head back out to sea that way. Danger of a rip is it's a lot deeper than the sandbanks, so people panic as soon as their feet don't touch the ground anymore. But some people just don't get the message. Jump on here, buddy. Uh, swimming in the rip. It's gonna be peak hour all day. 
On holiday from Texas, a rip was not on this man's itinerary. Uh, you don't think about drowning until you're about to drown. So I have no doubt that if uh, old boy with a surfboard when they came over, I probably would be drowning right now. They sort of need a good fright so they don't go back in in front of the, in front of the dangerous current signs. But I'm sure they will. They'll be back in there before you know it. Drifting into danger can happen on the sand as well as in the water. Among tens of thousands of beachgoers, Hoppo finds a little boy adrift on the beach. One, he's lost, he's lost his gear. Oh. So we're trying to find his gear. Hey, mate, I saw you before. You should have said something before. Oh. Right. And now we're trying to find his mum. Right. We're trying to find his mum as well. Nine-year-old Bob lives locally. His parents and belongings are nowhere to be found. Right, mate. It's right to leave without you. It's right to leave without you, mate. It's all right. It's all right, mate. Well, I saw your mum again, eh? <laughs> Just give me the number and we'll have a go. Thankfully, Bob remembers his mother's number. Yeah, her phone switched off because she, she's asleep. She's asleep? So you came down your own? Yeah. So your mum's at home. Surface your coin is switched off or not in coverage. Please try again later. What's wrong with that? We've sort of established now his mum's at home, he's a local kid. He's come down for a swim, left his gear amongst the crowd, now can't find where he's left his gear. He's getting a bit upset about it. Tried ringing his mum, but the phone's switched off. We're sort of stuck with him for a while. He might uh, become our little mascot for a little bit. And hopefully when the crowd goes a bit, we can uh, find his gear. It's too busy on the beach for the lifeguards to leave their posts. So Hoppo enlists an apprentice. The, the rip's over there, isn't it? The rip's over there. See how the rip's falling across? Have you been caught in a rip? No. You know how to swim out of a rip, though. Yeah? Yeah? You wouldn't get caught in a rip. Has anybody got hit by a board today? No, no one today. No gashes today. On Monday? Huh? On Monday, any gashes? Yeah, there's a few. What did I rip there? Did you have to One right across there. Right across his eye. Did you cry? No, he didn't cry. Did you go to hospital? It's tough. Went to hospital. Meanwhile, a gash has been reported in the tower. I'm hitting my head on the rock. Didn't knock yourself out, eh? Nah. Promising local footballer Kingy lost his footing and crash tackled a rock. You probably ran about four or five stitches. Does it hurt? No. <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Kingy's more worried about his laundry than the gash. Does blood come out of shirts? Yeah, but I'm just washing up. <laughs> Does blood come out of shirts? White shirts? Yeah. Thanks for a lot of here today. I'm a bit more worried about the shirt than my head. Nice. <laughs> 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 After going through thick and thin, the two amigos should be inseparable. Yeah, we end up. Go back to Maxi. Back to Maxi. I've walked all around the beach for about an hour trying to help him, and as soon as he found his gear, he's brushed me. And he goes, "I'm going back to Maxi, so I'll, I'll give it away." <laughs> After finally getting through to his mum, young Bob disappeared into the crowd and made his way back home. What not to do with a dead shark? <laughs> D-Day. Does trainee Maxi have a future as a fully-fledged lifeguard? He's got nowhere else to go. He either gets a job now or he just needs to move on to something else. A body off the cliffs. Beardy puts his life on the line.
another day at Bondi. Nice morning. Thanks, Mike. The master and apprentice begin their shift. It's like pretty much not a job. It's, you know, it's, yeah, paid for it, but I love it, so it's not like I wake up and punch a pillow ten times and don't want to come to work. Me and him have races so you could get here earlier. <laughs> It's taking you three years to dig a hole that good. <laughs> <laughs> When Maxie first started, he was a little 15-year-old punk, and he had braces and had a smile from ear to ear, and mate, it was just unreal fun to be around, and he really liked the join up. We had him for work experience. His teacher came down and said, oh, mate, you don't want to keep him, do you? Look at him now. Three years down the track, and we still can't get rid of him. But there's a problem for Maxie. Traineeships are meant to be for two years, not three. In all my time of lifeguarding, there's no one else I've ever seen so enthusiastic that Max here. But um, this job's really difficult because it just doesn't take just that alone. You know, the experience level um, isn't there yet. Max has got to be able to prove that to us. If he doesn't qualify for a permanent position soon, Maxie's days on Bondi are numbered. Four months earlier, in the dead of winter, Bondi's 35 lifeguards lined up to re-qualify for their positions. 50 to go, Dawn Fraser. While the veterans need to prove they've still got what it takes, the stakes are highest for trainees Jake and Maxie. Maxie, he's here doing his best to try and get in a, one of the positions that are available. If he doesn't get one of those, it's uh, goodbye, Maxie. Rival trainee Jake has already made his mark in the 800 metre swim. Yeah, he's a phenomenal swimmer, Jake, and uh, if he was to really knuckle down and give me anything. 9.13, Jake, and 9.17. Maxie's slower in the water, but there's no doubting his commitment. He's finished. Max, Max. You don't get the job, he can't count. <laughs> Maxie, uh, obviously, he's not real good at counting. He's doing uh, 50 metres more than he's meant to. After the pool, a gruelling test in the surf. Jake blitzed the swim. Now Maxie needs to show what he's made of. What are they doing to me, Jake? Looking around, everyone's rugged up and wetties, and Maxie's standing there in his sluggos, ready to go with no swim cap, so. Got to go harder, got to go for a job, you know, so um, not having a wetsuit will make me go faster. Ready, go! He takes a brave gamble in the frigid winter conditions. Maxie heads straight to the front, risking cramping in the 16 degree water. Come on, Maxie! Go, son! But Whippet is first to make it back for the paddle leg. Maxie did a really good time in the pool, and he's going really hard here. Yeah, he really wants that job. And... That's what you want to see. You want to see guys having a go and, and push themselves as hard as they can. Overall winner is Whippet. All right, Kerbox, I've got Maxi at 19 minutes. Never been that calm in life. Ever. Maxi comes in fifth, but this time has the edge on fellow trainee Jake. <laughs> Everyone makes the grade. Oxy? Oxy, yeah. yeah. Well done, mate. Clear. <laughs> well, mate, you don't want to fail. You don't want to not get a job. You don't want to miss out on the best job in the world. So you give it everything you got. Ah, uh, just give us five. Everyone wants to be here as a team, and no one wants to leave. It's uh, a job now that people sort of want to be here forever. The trainees both need to prove themselves over the coming months. But for Maxi, after three years training, he needs to take the next step or leave the service. As crowds build over summer, lifeguards brace themselves for the unexpected. A relaxed Sunday on Australia's most famous beach. But at 2pm, police contact the tower. A body has been reported off the cliffs. Guys, we need to launch the ski. Call was from the police that they might have a body off the golf course. 
and they want us to go around on our ski. No one knows whether the person is dead or alive. Harry's launches the jet ski. You stay in the tower, mate. I'll get a tube. Mate, stay in the tower. What, what's happened? Just, I don't know. Just there's a body in the, apparently around the golf course. Beardy okay. assigns trainee Jake to man the tower. A trainee wouldn't normally be given the responsibility of manning the tower, but there are just three lifeguards left to patrol Australia's busiest beach. Hopefully it's not a person, but, you know, more than likely could be. I'm not sure whether it's in the water. Police rescue has been called and on their way. Lifeguards must assume the person is still alive somewhere at the base of the cliffs. There's only one way to get there. Oh, oh. But locating the victim means putting their own lives at risk. As Beardy finally makes it onto the rocks, Police direct him to the reported location. Back in the tower, trainee Jake has been holding the fort all on his own. Hi, hi. Sorry, this is not a really good time to call. Can you please call back in uh, about half an hour? It's been really busy. Thank you. Sorry. Bye. Beardy hasn't been able to locate the body. Polaire and police rescue join the search. They can't see the body, but um, they're assuming that it, it's on the cliff and the helicopter's hovering, so I don't think it's in the water. That's, that's the latest update we've had. Nothing from the police yet. Eventually, the victim is found. A deceased man. Nothing to do with us now. It's like right up on the top of the land. With police now in charge, lifeguards can return to the beach. They've declared the, the uh, area a crime scene, so... Come in, we're out, we're gone. The man has been dead for some time, but lifeguards never make assumptions. Only not too long ago, we did go around and the person was alive and, you know, we made the right decision to go in the water. For trainee Jake, being thrown in the deep end was a challenge. He had a, a massive role with he had to do probably three or four things at once. Yeah, it would have been extremely stressful up in the tower. It's just a bit overwhelming. I had two phones ringing and I was contacting the helicopter and I was doing four or five things at once. <laughs> My brain was just racing, you know. Bondi is never short of surprises. But some surprises are less welcome than others. Over the years, Bondi's shark nets have revealed their deadly catch. Ready to go? Today, lifeguards have spotted something caught in the nets. You're jumping off first. No, I won't. <laughs> that won't be happening. <laughs> the suspected shark needs to be removed, dead or alive. Yeah, it's kind of curious to see what it is, and I'd love to give the fisheries guys a ring to come and uh, get out of the net, I think. Hopefully there's no more lurking around, but the water's a bit dodgy at the moment. It's a bit green, there's not much visibility, so it'd be interesting to see how we go. Quickers and bacon draw the short straw. What is it? <laughs> it's a grain earth shark, tragically a protected species. Generally considered harmless, their teeth are still razor sharp. What are we doing that? You know, the water's so murky, you like, who knows what's underneath? Obviously, the smell attracts other sharks. Gases in the shark's decomposing body make it float to the surface. As bacon clowns around, the shark launches a surprise attack. <laughs> bacon's just something just silly. I don't think he realises he was trying to kiss it. Not smart. That karma stuff can come back and bite you. 
the shark face moment. to face with the shark and he breathed on me his hand. Oh, never felt more crook. It was disgusting. It was the most disgusting hideous smell you ever smoked in your life. Two days later, anxious swimmers report an unwelcome visitor. Yeah, she's biting. She's saying something. She looks pretty adamant. She's the shark that was in the net has drifted to shore. There's a shark in the rip. <laughs> North of the middle set of flags. You can't leave the thing there. Eh? People are going to freak when they see it. Like, you can't leave it there. Keen to impress, trainee Maxi volunteers for the job. Everyone's happy with that scenario. So he's going to go in and get the shark, and we're all going to stand and watch. <laughs> You jump down, I'll sit up and wait for you. This is a good utensil, grab it. Yeah. We'll see how we go. But I'm excited, that's all. I'm excited, something different. Maxi eventually discovers the lurking troublemaker. It's got to come out of the water, it's dead, it's, you know, we don't want to attract more sharks and we don't want to scare people. So uh, we'll get it out of the water as the first step. Not experienced in the art of shark rescues, Maxi and Troy attempt a technique normally reserved for unconscious swimmers. With an unconscious person, you roll the board over and flip their arm and use the board to pull their momentum to pull them back onto the board. But I don't think that'll work with a dead shark. They seem to be trying that. They got it up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he had a big rope as he was getting ready to go in the water and he was still in some fancy knots with it. I said, mate, just go in and pull the bloody thing out. Troy and Maxi resort to a two-man drag technique. Mate, not every day at Bondi we, uh, we pull a shark out of the water. Now, swimmers are suddenly very brave. The only thing under attack right now are beachgoers' nostrils. It stinks! Yeah, do you take it up the beach, get the boys on the shovels, and that's it, mate. I reckon give it a burial. Grave digging isn't in the lifeguard manual. Trying to put that shark in a plastic bag and take it up to a bin would be, be a horrible, horrible thing to do. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Say a couple of words, Maxie. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not really good with words, mate, but... Uh, rest in peace. He's, he's rest in peace, mate. He's had a good life, by the sounds of it. Let's just call him Frank. Frank. See you, Frank, mate. Nice knowing you. <laughs> but there are much more common dangers at Bondi. All these people swimming directly in front of us. You can just move over onto the sandbank a bit for us. For your own safety. A rip can kill as well as any shark. I know I've got some more little kids in this river right here after you go move. A group of school children from Korea ignore warning signs and swim in Bondi's most dangerous rip. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Language proves a problem. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Where's mum and dad? Yeah, okay. But just no swimming here, sir. They don't know the picture in the flags. I told them now we can swim there. Now, from now. But has the lesson sunk in? Give them a little, little advice, help them on their way. It's nice, you know? They're a mad little gang. Minutes later, Maxi spots more swimmers in trouble at the same rip. What are you going for? They turn out to be the same kids lifeguards warned earlier on. With three swimmers to drag in, Troy and volunteer lifesavers help out. Two clubs. Maxi and Gonzo. It should be right. Just need to put them back on that bank. It's just stress for us. Not only are we going to look for, look, watch them, we're going to watch 30,000 people, you know? So having people you've told numerous times not to swim in places or rescue, just frustrating. Maxie decides the first lesson didn't sink home. Right, Who speaks English here? Uh, your brother, okay, where's your brother? I'm here. Yeah? OK, mate. Right. Is that the second time you've been rescued today? Yeah. 
Is this the first time? Second time. And here, see our dangerous current? Uh -huh. That's why, did you see us rescue? Uh -huh. Did you see us rescue your kids? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, it's, it's very dangerous down here. And the kids come up with a solution. If you can, maybe we won't, we won't get you to in time, you could drown, you know? Have a good day. And just make sure not again, OK? OK, you're right, mate. The teacher decides school is over. After three years as a trainee, a year over regulation, D Day has come for Maxi. Situation for Maxi, he pretty much he's got nowhere else to go. Either he gets a job now, or he just needs to move on to something else. With rival trainee Jake snapping at his heels, a long term future as a professional lifeguard is now or never. Maxie's in there now uh, in his interview and he's going for the temporary part-time position. Got uh, a lot of years ahead of him and I think he'd uh, keep the smile off his face if he got it. Either his lifeguard days are over or about to begin anew. Stoke, boys, stoke. Did you get temporary part-time, brother? Yeah. Jake oh. is first to congratulate him. What are you doing for the year, mate? For Jake, his traineeship is extended for another year. Three, two, <laughs> yeah. No, so, mate, it's another year, so at least I'm still on. It's good, mate, it's good. Yeah. Hopefully there'll be a few spots next year. Praying. <laughs> <laughs> no one could ever say I didn't start off from the bottom, so I'm making my way up. Okay. I'm stoked. You know, he's such a great kid, you know. He took all our feedback on board and he'll be here for years to come, so he'll be uh, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, can't kick me out now unless I do something really bad, but... <laughs> I've done enough mistakes not to ever do them again, so we'll see. Yeah, you've got too much experience now to, do, uh, <laughs> to break anything. Fall away. I, break, I didn't break anything last year. No, you did well. Yeah. Over the next season, we'll see some uh, massive change in him from a boy into a man. There's an important call to Maxie's biggest supporter. Yeah, Mum. I've got temporary part-time, Mum. I've got a job, so it's all good. Yeah. Your little boy's growing up. I, know, I, th I don't think my name's going to be Maxie anymore. I think it's going to be Trent. All right, I love you. Bye. Bye, brother. Stoke. Days later, Maxi has a chance to show what he's made of. Please, uh, backpackers, go on. Go on. Go, go, go. Two tourists have disregarded danger signs and struggle against a rip. Lifeguarding is a job where seconds count. He's only a young man. He's extremely funny and what he brings to the service is um, it's just so much happiness. I mean, he's got a world of knowledge now at such a you know, young age and... Yeah, I think he's got everything it takes. He's just... Uh, his attitude's changed so much in the last 12 months. Look, he could easily become, you know, team leader. If not, he could probably kick pop over out of his job one day. Maxie, you've got to give it to him. He's that passionate about being a lifeguard. He's, he's having a go at everything. He's not leaving anything to rest. And I think he's got the ability to learn. I think he really wants to learn. So I think it'd be fantastic. The boy that's become a man saves two lives. I can swim out. I think you can swim, we can't yeah. swim in. Yeah, but it's too hard to get out. <laughs> Panic in Backpackers Rip. <laughs> Lost on Bondi. The boys in blue dispense some tender loving care. A nice block? No. We want the hop. And the world's most famous lifeguard pays a visit. We want the hop. A rainy day on Bondi. The days you never see on postcards. But the tourists still keep coming. Many are poor swimmers with poor English. Even on quiet days, lifeguards must stay alert. Well away from the safety of the flags, a group of tourists have ventured into the notorious Backpackers Rip. Central Black Rhino. Ah, oh, boy, it's pretty bad.
Looks like a little Indian family. The mother's standing on the shore now. They've just walked straight into that rip. The worst spot on the beach. Kid's only tiny. Out of his depth, a young boy is pounded by breaking waves. Chapo bolts past the boy's distressed mother. A novice surfer tries to reach the boy. Now, it's a double rescue. The boy's father is also in trouble. As the surfer reaches the boy, Chapo reassures his father. started getting taken out. I think the father and, and that realised he's in trouble. So what they've done, they've jumped in to try and help and they've obviously got themselves in trouble as well. Chapo signals to Jake to bring in the boy. But now the man's daughter enters the water. He doesn't want her to experience the same terror. The Sholapur family from Mumbai are on the last day of a three-week holiday. A last swim for eight-year-old Ariane nearly cost he and his father their lives. It's OK. I saw your son from up there. And that's why we're here. Don't scream at us. I know. We, that's why we're here, OK? Thank you. Safely back on shore, Dunstan gives the family a quick lecture in Surf Safety 101. You can't just jump in where you want, right? You have to ask questions, look yeah. at the signs. Sure, Because sure. you guys swam right in front of that yellow sign, which has a no swimming symbol on it. I was going in, uh, and many waves came at a time, so then I I got drowned and I was pedaling, so then I didn't go inside the water. I just heard the scream, and then we were following him from there, and I just saw him, just his head is showing up, up and down, up and down, but not able to come out, you know, come this side. He's just going in and in. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Australia's best-known beach is no stranger to the rich and famous. Last year, teen heartthrob Zac Efron sent some beachgoers into a frenzy. Very exciting event down here today if you're a 12-year-old girl. But now, it's the lifeguard's turn to go crazy. It's been worded up, there's someone very important out there, and it's... Harry's just keen as to get out there. Mate, I'm going to have doing. to tell you it is. <laughs> this is a VIP guest. It's our godfather. <laughs> it's the Hoff. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> David Hasselhoff, the Hoff, is still riding the crest of hit 90s show Baywatch. David Hasselhoff's coming. Four, four. I have no idea, mate. We just saw uh, Bondi on the map, and then we drove out here, and all of a sudden David Hasselhoff is here. So <laughs> that's pretty fun. <laughs> Some Hufflepuff or Hasselhoff or somebody? <laughs> Mr. Hufflepuff. This is my daughter. She had no idea who David Hasselhoff was. What's his name? Hufflepuff. Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. Yeah, that's the one. Ready to meet the half. He's a sexy piece of meat. He is the godfather of life game. Oh, there he is. He's got his bow watch gear on. Oh, yes. The half, mate. <laughs> the godfather has arrived. <laughs> Father like son! What's happening? 
Oh, I, can, I think I can see the pearly whites flashing from here. The Hoff is on a whirlwind promotional tour to sell ice creams. But the make-believe lifeguard is about to bump into a real one. Hell yeah. Good job. Good job. You look like a little Hoff over here, brother. Uh, you Come are on, my, man. You are my godfather. Come on, yeah. <laughs> I'm the Hoff father. I pride myself on you. What's your name, you. man? Harry's. Harry's. Nice to meet so you, man. So I took H. I yeah. took the Hoff. I'm yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. Good, great job out there. The Hoff even manages to squeeze in a few lines from his latest album. Look you feel. We're going straight. The Hoff is invited to escape the hysteria. It's a rare opportunity to observe the serious work in the lifeguard tower. The Hoff! The Hoff! Let's go The fairy godfather of lifeguards, Baywatch star David Hasselhoff, has sent the real boys in blue into a frenzy. Hoff and Bondi! Yeah! yeah. The Hoff is about to be put through his paces. He can cut it in Hollywood, but can he on Bondi? What we're going to do, though, if you're going to be here and be one of us, you're going to have to put one of our... Absolutely. Uh, yeah! 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 See what it might do. It might get you to do a radio call, maybe over to one of the other beaches. Bondi Central to all lifeguards is David Hasselhoff. You <laughs> <laughs> got me over here. <laughs> We want to see CJ. <laughs> yeah, CJ's here. We got Pamela Anderson in the tower right now. Come on, guys. Come on, say hi to Sammy. Oh, let's go. All right, I'm getting off the line there. We're going to go I'm off the wave runners and uh, make a few rescues. You guys have a good day. He's going to get back in Australia. Yeah, I love it down here. Oh. All right. The Hoff just can't seem to get enough of real lifeguarding. OK, guys, this is David Hasselhoff, The Hoff. You guys have got to move over to the left by the flags, please. Into the flags. And there's been a sighting of a beautiful girl in the water. Be very careful. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> We've got our yeah! godfather here. Yeah. Yeah. It's the biggest bromance seen on Bondi. Right. Ever the showman, Hoff doesn't forget to mention his sponsors. OK, Splice Guard's out of here. <laughs> God bless. I'll see you. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Sure. Some fun and games are harmless. But others keep lifeguards very busy. Flat Rock. An irresistible magnet for kids. Also, Bondi's prime location for cuts, bruises, and damaged egos. A couple of good ones there. That's not hurting down there. No, that's just blood. 15 year old Kate has experienced the dangers of Flat Rock for the first time. I'm not jumping off any more rocks ever. <laughs> Kate has more than a few scratches. She'll need some stitches. Got my away while we're on a rock. So I'm like really cut up and stuff. And um, we're just getting help now, and then I'm going to get the ambulance to the hospital. And that is, I'm not sure if you yeah, so <laughs> Like, there's heaps of people. You don't have to worry about it. I'm by myself. The other side's lying, and how are we going to manage all the border? As I said, how are we going to get... I just called my mum, and she's going to come down to the hospital. <laughs> but Kate is not Flat Rock's only victim. She's the first of a steady stream. Whenever we get a bit of a swell and all the kids are on holidays, Flat Rock's pretty much... The place to be, and without and doubt, it definitely gives us our most first aids out of anywhere. Bondi, sir, Bondi Central, come in. Yeah, 
can go ahead. Yeah, mate, just to let you know, they're both, um, they're going to take two of the patients to the hospital. Yeah, no worries. Well, it's got um, two big gashes up here as well from the flat rock. I've got like 30 cuts just in my knee. No more flat rock. It's going to get bigger tomorrow. Will it? And you've it's missed out. Ten victims and 20 worried parents. Flat Rock lives up to its reputation. Are we going to be on Bondi Rescue? It's like yeah. follow the leader, isn't it? Like we did it when we were kids. <laughs> I pretty much watched him do it, so I started doing it when I was a kid. Back in the water, Dunstan tries to control hundreds of people ignoring warning signs. There's no swimming here, man. You can't swim here. There's a lot of people in the water down here in South. This is a rip. We're trying to keep it clear. With so many swimmers, resources are stretched to the limit. Just attention all these swimmers in front. Copy. You can't swim here, you have to swim on the sandbank. Lifeguards focus their attention on the most dangerous parts of the beach, but they can't be everywhere, every time. Uh, the guy on the edge of backpack is... Hey, data dude. Suddenly, two men are spotted struggling 50 metres up the beach. In backpack, this guy going under. A volunteer lifesaver arrives first. The lifesaver dives in to rescue a man going under. He needs urgent help. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Mate. You saved my life. I know we do. I know we do. Siraj, a student from Nepal, is recently married. Stand here. Yeah. We'll walk over there. Alright, mate. Thank him. He's one of the. Thank God you were there. I would have been looking for him on the bottom. Sure. Water pushed me inside in the deep and I couldn't get it out and I'm scared. I'm newly married that I remember my wife, my country. That's at that moment, that's my end of the life, I think in that moment and that period. Well thanks guys. No worries. That's a good one. Yeah. Good, good, good. You guys deserve all the recognition you get. That was as close as it gets, I reckon. And I knew as soon as they, as soon as they left that sandbag, they went straight underwater. And I just had to bolt. Yeah. To me, you know, normally it's just a person, but when you get a little bit of insight into, you know, what they actually have, and I suppose like anybody, we've all got family, so, you know, he goes home to them tonight. It's good. Awesome. And lucky I'm a fast runner. With thousands jammed on the kilometre stretch of sand, it's inevitable things get lost. Mostly, it's money or jewellery. But today, something far more precious. Okay. Yeah? Can I help in? you find Mummy and Daddy? We'll be all right. Just come, we'll come in here and have a sit down. Yeah? She was, like, at the end of the pier. See where the mule will paint in his long ear? She was long ear. Yep. There is nobody, you can't see anybody looking for her at all. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So this man will look after you now, OK? Come inside. Yeah? And we'll, we'll go and look for Mummy and Daddy up that way for you as well, yeah? We'll help you find her. Yeah? <coughs> Come on. I didn't want to wander off that up. The little girl may not speak English or is too distraught to speak at all. Might need to get a hand to come in. Yeah, yeah <laughs> let's go in here and we'll see... What's your name? This is Megan. What's your name? What's your name? Jessica? <coughs> Jessica? Lisa? I'm just trying to get some names. Sarah? Oh. This could take some time. What's your name? <coughs> 
With no information to work with, it's difficult to know where to begin the search. Where was the last time you seen your mum? What's mum's name? What's your name? <laughs> Should we try and find Mummy and Daddy on the TV screen? The only place they could have been probably was in the car park, because that's where she was wandering around by the stairs. It's all right. It's all right. Troy and Maxie give her some old-fashioned TLC. Do you, want, do you want to have a look and see if you can see her? Have a look? Yeah. Do you want a nice block? Do you want a nice block? Do you want a nice block? No. Security vision doesn't reveal any familiar faces. That should to all Bondi Alaska. Uh, we've got a lost girl. Can't get any information ever. She's crying. So I'm um, interested. Destroy her. Just step up here. Hi, Mummy. 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 Hi, Mummy.
sun, sand and surf at their best. The only people on edge are Bondi's lifeguards. Yeah, I just got here this morning and I was surprised. It's 11 o'clock and it's high tide and the, the swell is still pretty solid. And there's big surges up the beach here. You can see some of the stuff just got washed away. The roof's going to start pulling soon. The tide going out, a lot of people, they all don't mix, so. Hey, you know, we're going to be pretty stretched. I actually got an extra guy in today, I got Chapo to come back us up, so well, hopefully we don't get too many casualties, but yeah, it's got the making of a busy afternoon. Bondi's rips become more dangerous with the falling tide. Going or not going? Mate, I'm going to give him a little bit, I'm all over him. He just got in. In big surf, swimmers can disappear in seconds, but beachgoers ignore repeated warnings. I'm going to f***ing blow up on these guys. Get out of the water. I told you guys already. What if we let you back down now? What's going to happen? Why don't you as a group go to the flag? You can't swim, that's a problem. Oh, well, I just told you guys to go swim between the flags. Hey, you think it's funny? It's not funny. We don't want to risk our lives to save kids. Adding to the chaos, busloads of tourists unload onto the beach. Some are cautious. Others throw caution to the wind. <laughs> Go up and swim between the flags. Conditions are too dangerous today. Don't be stupid idiots. Walk straight in. Just go up and swim between the flags. Anticipating trouble, team leader Kerbox deploys the jet ski. Yeah, done deal, mate. You got it. Oh, mate, you definitely have to get it, guys. Done on his head now. At South End, two swimmers are caught in a raging rip battered by waves. Pete Terry off the back of the berg, mate. Off the back of iceberg. Dunno barely makes headway. The jet ski finally reaches them between waves. It's a good rescue, Terry. Very good rescue. Terry drops off the man on a sandbank. Then his partner. Okay. okay. I don't know what's going on. The boys are running in. It's not a deep river. No, it's not a deep river. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Oh. It was the first swim at Bondi for this German tourist and her Dutch boyfriend. We're in the dangerous down here, OK? Yeah. You need to swim in the red and yellow flags. You came, honestly, you came that far from dying, man. Believe me. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I really hold on to you. Nice central, we're in down at Backpackers. Further up the beach, Maxi heads out to a second rescue. A surfer has gone to the aid of two girls, but loses hold in the churning water. I might go as well. The two German backpackers have been swept more than 100 metres from the beach. Come on, quickly. One of you get up. The fight is hot. But a double rescue in these conditions is almost impossible for one lifeguard. Max is getting smashed out there. Good drag. The other way, the other way, the other way. Max, the other way. In seconds, the girls lurch from sheer terror right. to sheer joy. Right. <laughs> Back in safe water, they're surprisingly reluctant to end the rescue. Where's that rescue man? You didn't even get on the board, you still got around. <laughs> 4 pm. With the tide at dead low, Bondi's rips are lethal. It's like a river down there. Even the shortest swim can go very wrong. Sometimes it can be too late. Oh, mate, these ribs are banging. Now, even swimming between the flags becomes dangerous. 
With the beach at its busiest, lifeguards decide to launch a second jet ski. Then, a distressed man runs to the tower. Something is happening between the flags. Central jet ski, can you go in the middle of the flags? Got a, someone waving middle of the flags. Copy, mate. Sam Pink, middle of the main set now. Quick, get there. Um, do you want us to meet them on the shore? Yeah, mate, you're going to have to get there. Chapo and Kalen are half a kilometre away at South End. Speak to us, Dana. Middle of the main set, blue jet ski, get there. Hard to tell yet, man, but uh, I think they've got someone on the back of the ski. Um, yeah, I think you get near the DP I'm just going to keep going until you get this Just keep going, just keep going. Okay. I'm just going until... Try and get the defib. as well. Embo being called, Embo being called. Let's get the defib. No, Maybe we need someone to come up and get a defib. The defib is in the tower, but Dunno can't leave the control post unmanned. The defib is vital. Dunstan has no choice but to enlist a passing backpacker. Oi, guys, guys, you're doing me a massive favour, man. Green shorts. Oi, man, you need to run this down. Oi, oi, buddy. Do us a massive favour, man. You need to run that down yes. to the other side of the flag. <laughs> See that flag, flag down there? Someone's just drowned. Get down there. I need good, good. I, 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 I promise, I promise. Get down there, man. Run, run. <laughs> oi, run. Run, man. We need to get him up in the dry sand. I'm coming to the third round now. Where's that He's now been clinically dead for three minutes. 21, 22, 22. Yeah, but we're happy we've done this a lot of times. Keep going, Maxie. Okay, two breaths, two breaths, mate. One. Just slow down. Let's go. Pads on. Just stop talking over each other. It's now four minutes since the man was first discovered. No one knows how long he was under the water before then. It's critical that no one touches the man's body while it is shot. I know, but you can't touch, don't him. touch him. Don't touch don't him. Touch him. Don't, touch him. don't touch him. You'll get electrocuted. Check airway. Someone in here go. Breathing. If needed, begin CPR. Okay, Has he got a pulse? pulse? I've got a pulse. I have a pulse. Okay, so do you want to have a pulse? He's responding. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's breathe with him. Breathe with him. I've got a pulse, I've got a pulse. Breathe him up. Breathe him up. I've got a pulse. I've got a good pulse. Yeah, we're going to breathe him up. He's all right, mate. We got him. We got him, mate. Keep breathing him up. His name is Ryan Kim, 26, a student from Korea. Side on three. One, two, three. See if we can clear his airway. Give him a better. See if he wants to bomb it. Yeah. Take the good airway now. Okay. Continue. Land one. If he doesn't, 
That's it, you've got a lot of fluid coming out, Carl. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's just keep back. Yeah, Your has got a good, good, yeah. Okay, there's, good. there's a lot of fluid let's, let's coming out. That's good. So back, back, and see out a little bit more. But lifeguards' work doesn't let up. Swimmers are now in trouble at South Bondi. We need someone down there. Essential to one of the boys doing the race us. Do you think he might have hit his head on the bottom? No. Can he swim? No. He's coming around, but a bit more oxygen. Okay, he's getting a lot more colour in his face. Then, only minutes after being brought back to life. You all right, mate? Hey, 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 Ryan still needs urgent medical care. Good. Done a good job. Done Close friend Dan is by his side. Yeah. 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 You're all right, mate. You're all right. Yeah. 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 How long till we came to? Probably about maybe four sets of CPR. Yeah. Four yeah. hours, five, maybe. Yeah. So and then was CPR. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Precaution still needs to be taken in case of other injuries. Grabbing this spinal board so it came off. Good work done, eh? <laughs> With water in his lungs, Ryan is still at risk of cardiac arrest and secondary drowning. And then I see Maxie come flying in, and I just see this body, gangly body, being dragged up the beach, and I'm like, One of the first to reach Ryan was former lifeguard Matt Cahoon. Yeah, I was just out body surfing, and a whole lot of kids had there. They were doing the right thing. I sent Matt over on the board, he's whacked a breath into him. Maxie on the jet ski came across. I jumped on the back of the jet ski, he was gone, he was vomiting up, his eyes were rolling. Someone handed him his arm, pulled him up by myself, dragged him up, and, um, one of the swimmers out there was an ex-lifeguard, and I said, mate, get on, and like, you know, start, start compressing. Took him straight in. To be honest, I thought he was um, gone. When we got down there, and I, looked, I sort of was straight on the head, and I looked straight down into his eyes, and it just looked ugly. Like, it looked like a deep black hole, and I was like, oh, this isn't gonna end well. But even before Ryan reaches hospital, the day's drama is far from over. I reckon he was in the flag, and he's dripped. No, actually, there was about that, there was about, Oh, these two here. Oh, oh no. Maxie's right behind him. Those two. Maxie, get out there. Can you tell the truth? Maxie passes Reedy, the last rescue victim of the day. This time, a drowning averted. At St Vincent's emergency, Ryan is still in critical condition. Paramedics brief doctors. Dragged to the beach. The lifeguards put a automated fibula over on, they didn't shock him. As we're coming in, complaining of neck pain. Dan is eager for news. Um, he was very, very badly hurt in the in the water. His lungs were full of water. So we've had to put a tube down his throat and a machine is ventilating him. In his stomach as well, a lot of water. About, we had about half a litre of water in there. You want to see him? Yes. He's very lucky. Very lucky to be alive. CPR started straight away, and that's what was needed. Instant, early, effective CPR. And the government have 
saved his life. The boys did extremely well over here, so um, thanks for the support, boys, and um, you know I think we'll need it. We're going to have a couple more days like today, I reckon. On Bondi, life returns to its more familiar patterns. A week after Ryan Kim was brought back to life, first aid expert Jamie Twy holds a debrief session. It's the first time I've seen this, so let's, let's have a look. Oi! Bring him up, oi! Get him out of the water, get him out of the water. Get him out of the water, get him out of the water. That guy is so blue. Obviously, no, no spinal precautions taken here, but listen, your priority, the guy's blue, he's not breathing, he's, he's a drowning victim, you need to get him out the beach and start working on him. There's a lot of water coming out of him now. At this stage, I would have rolled him and tried to get some water out of him. OK? Yeah, so here, right, we stop here, we stop here. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to respond to that CPR. As they fine-tune their skills, Hoppo arrives with a dead man walking. Uh, he's still unconscious, he still doesn't have a gag reflex. Okay, so... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Are you serious? Uh, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Hey, hey, you look a little, little bit different. <laughs> <It's me. laughs> <laughs> Do you want to watch this from the start? <laughs> yes? Yeah? yeah? Okay. <laughs> All right. Here you are. Hey, get him out of the water. 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 And then we'll start compressions up here. Oh my god, I was dead. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, dead. Now you're back. There's no more dramatic story to take back home. Do you remember what happened? Uh, I swim in the sea. Yeah, yeah. Then big waves cover me. My body is turned over in the sea, yeah. so yeah. I drank too much, too much sea. Yeah, salt water, yeah. yeah, salty water. And I can swim, so I tried, I tried that, but and another, another wife, yeah. maybe uh, three times, yeah. I I give it, give, give up. I fall in water. Oh, above yeah. your head, yep. Yeah, everything is so comfortable, and and then I think, oh, it's die, it's it's die. Oh, I'm very skilled. I'm and then scared. my memory is slowly, slowly shut down. Yeah. First, I wake, wake, wake him up. Yes. Uh, I hold crap. Oh, really? You remember? Yeah. So, very major. You're a woman. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's pretty special to, to meet the guy and just to see him walking around. It's good. It's, uh, it's a good feeling. I, it's this wine oh, <laughs> for you. Oh, we love wine. Thank you very much. What makes young girls cry and grown men weep? <laughs> and lifeguard's grim discovery. A man can't move his arms or legs. He's got no feeling at all. And now his chest. Um, we're going to have to start on CPR, so we, you know, we need an ASAP, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Just the back here, mate. A man has collapsed after swimming the bay. He's come out of the water. He's got like one of those triath triathlete wetsuits. The Bondi local may have suffered multiple blue bottle stings, but his reaction is unusually severe. Oxygen will help his breathing. What's your name, Ruben. Hot water's the best thing for it, if we can get you over the road. Hot water can help neutralise toxins remaining on his skin. But toxins already in the body can cause excruciating pain in the glands. Yet it's Reuben's back that hurts most. Feels like my back is breaking. Yeah, Getting worse? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's going back. Lifeguards need to ascertain whether Reuben is suffering something else. Are you allergic to bee stings no, or prawns or anything like that? All right. And you never had any anaphylactic uh, no. problems before? 
Dino decides to administer the green whistle, a powerful analgesic. Just breathe normally, Ted, you just keep it in your mouth. It has little effect. Oh, no. oh. Oh. The ambulance will give you some more pain relief soon, yeah. Just try and relax on you. I know it sounds hard. Paramedics are briefed on Ruben's baffling reaction. I hurt so much. I know. So we're going to get you some. Oh. Do you have some hot water here? We've got oh. a shower across the road. I wanted to get in there. Oh. Have you just got um, we can, we, if you, if hot... We can walk him or boil him across. I've got hot water. You want hot water? A big breath in. in. No, no. A big breath in. In for your mouth. That's it. Keep going like that. I want 20 big breaths. Finally, the pain relief takes effect. You're looking much better, Ruben. Feeling better? Quite often the case with blue bottles is, is you know, people think they're going to die and they get themselves in such a state of shock that they, they can, people can die from shock. So he was that bad that we had to treat him that way. But as Ruben heads off to hospital for assessment, the culprits march closer to shore. Portuguese men of war, commonly known as blue bottles, are blown in by onshore winds. Their tentacles, metres long, are armed with tiny but powerful darts. Deadly to small fish, excruciating to humans. Just attention all the swimmers out in front. There are a few blue bottles starting to make their way in now. And if you do get stung, don't panic. Just have a fresh water shower located on the promenade and it should go away within about 30 minutes. Just relax, relax. Oh no, you've got to get it off. You just got to sort of cater to each individual where that becomes tricky after there's, you know, 50 or so just coming at you at once and you're trying to watch the water at the same time. It's just frustrating with blue bottles. They're just a punish. Thousands are in the water. Being stung is a lottery. A blue bottle swarm has hit Bondi, you could say. Open your eye, try and open your eye for me. Like that one. I just want to see if there's any blue stuff in that. You're right. If you've got it all out, it's just going to be like swollen. I'll give you some ice to put on it, but we, there's nothing for the pain. It stung me in the arm first, and then I went to rub the water oh. on my eyes. And... Oh, you got it there. Yeah, if it gets worse and you start, it starts to swell up and you can't see out of your eye, definitely just go straight to the hospital. Cheers. Despite warnings, swimmers take their chances. It's pretty common now, you know, we're pretty used to panic, especially for people that haven't been stung by a blue bottle before. It is quite scary. I mean, it's a pretty intense sort of pain, and when you look down, you've got these blue tentacles sort of wrapped around your limbs. It's not the best feeling in the world. Oh, you'll be okay. I'll be okay. Don't worry, you'll be fine. It's just a little sting. It's okay. It's part of coming to Bondi. You meet the blue bottles. Sometimes the best treatment is humour. Grab the, oh uh, chainsaw. <laughs> Grab the chainsaw. Grab the chainsaw. We're just going to chop it off. Come in, yeah. They recommended amputation, but um, yeah, they just said just keep doing what I'm doing, put ice and stuff on it, and yeah. <laughs> Millions of blue balls washing in. One more. Hey, buddy, what's up? Can we jump from here, sir? What, what, what's up? We need to yeah, move. there's a tent down there, red and yellow tent. They'll sort you out on the beach. There's front. a tent. Just got every man and his dog getting stung. and. We're, we're just so busy watching the water that you, we just can't attend to every blue bottle sink. All right, so it's a blue bottle. It's extremely common along here, and it's going to be really sore for the next 40 minutes. This will make it feel a load better. Just got to tough it out. You'll be fine, trust me. You see this all the time. All right, boys. It'll go away. It only lasts about half an hour. Then it'll be itch. And then you'll die. TLC is often enough to ease the pain. Just want to shower, you just got to tighten up. Yeah. Be strong, mate. But some won't be comforted. No! 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 You saw? Ten-year-old Jasmine has multiple stings. What I want you to do, I want you to go over here and wash the area. 
and then come back in and I'll spray it and we'll give you some more. <laughs> Knock on the door, I'll be right with you. Oh, mate, I've, uh, I've seen some blue bottle reactions in my life, and that's number one. That was unbelievable. Jasmine's reaction is extreme. Lifeguards are about to find out why. Yeah, I feel bad because, like, uh, the poor girl came over here. We thought she was just uh, overreacting to a bluey sting. It was a horrible sting, but it turns out she's autistic. She isn't overreacting, she just doesn't know why that she's got so much pain. I don't want to have a game, babe! Yeah, the jellyfish is gone now. A topical spray will help further ease Jasmine's pain. Sweetheart, sit here. Come on, sit down here. I haven't got one in me anymore! No, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It just stings for a little bit. You're I gonna haven't be got fine. one! That was very intense, very, very intense. Like, uh, at first, we just thought it was someone overreacting to a blue bottle, which happens a lot. You get it with grown men, little kids, whatever. And, like, everyone, like, reacts differently. A lot of people don't have, don't have much ticker. It shakes you up, though, it shakes you up. When you see someone in your face uh, that distraught, pretty, pretty heavy. Half an hour later, Calm finally returns. The swelling has almost gone, but not the memory. I did see the sign, but to be honest, I thought, because when there's so many people out in the sea, that there weren't going to be any about. I don't know if she'll be too keen to go back in the sea. Luckily, there's no jellyfish on the sand. Having fun has its risks. Lifeguards never know when a real disaster may strike. Guys, we've got someone uh, pulled out of the water unconscious. I think they're on our beach up A man has been dragged from the surf. Within moments, lifeguards make a diagnosis. I think it's just a suspected spinal. So the boys are just going to run back up here and grab the spinal board and some equipment and, uh, and, and head back down. Dean attends Leo, a 28-year-old Brazilian man. He's unable to move his arms or legs. Tell him to keep his head still, very important. And did he dive in the water? Um, I didn't see. Oh, OK, right on. And how did he get pulled out of the water? Did you see that? Um, the boys took him They up. just dragged him out? What, he... What? It appears there was just one witness. Can you go for a swim? He hit his head on the, on the ground. Can you feel this now? Can you move his feet? My wits are behind me. See what this will be? I'll meet you in a little bit. Leo is part of a Brazilian dance troupe. He is due to perform tonight. Let's just leave. Let's have to leave him. Just like that. Just relax. Is it your work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax. Tell you boy. Tell him he's doing well. Tell you boy. Tell him to be me. Just relax. Deep breaths. We know it hurts. Got to be brave. Jake, I haven't touched the patient as of yet because he's got no nerves and not feeling. I'm reluctant to do so, but maybe they can advise whether whether they want me to package him up or not. Dean hasn't packaged him because he said he's got no movement. So he's got no feeling at all. Oi, respira devagar, porque você está pegando oxigênio, brother. Você não precisa respirar tanto, não, com o oxigênio, você está ajudando a respirar para você. Só tente respirar devagarzinho. Must be some big bubble in his breathing. In extreme cases, spinal victims can lose the power to breathe. I just hopped off the phone with the ambulance. They're about six minutes off. Well, ladies, you know, if he stops breathing, um, we're going to have to start doing CPR. If Leo stops breathing, lifeguards will be faced with a terrible dilemma. Resuscitating Leo may damage his spinal cord further. You know, we need an ambo here ASAP, mate. Dean, uh, the ambo just come around to the roundabout now. G'day, mate, how are you? What language does he speak? Portuguese. Um, I'm not OK. Oxygen is 
Ah, então a respiração tá boa, mano. É só é o oxigênio que tá bem. Não, não se afobe não, que tá tudo de boa. A spinal board will immobilize Leo on the way to hospital. One, two, three, We're going to look at Mark's part. We're going to transport him up to the ambulance and then from there coordinate a landing area. That's really upsetting for me to see. Um, he had no movement or feeling below, below the neck, really. Um, you know, I just kept in there, basically, and tried to really reassure him, and I wanted to do everything, you know, as much as possible to give him every chance to walk again. A chopper is the smoothest way to transport Leo to hospital. The only hope is that Leo's symptoms are caused by severe swelling and not an irreparable break. Touching him and he just had nothing. She, she was poking him here and he could feel that at the end, but <laughs> it just... That's so sad. Lifeguards wait for news on Leo's condition. Next day, and there's a happy discovery on the beach. Honey, how are you? Good. Yesterday, you got the worst blue bottle sting I've ever seen in my whole life. How much did it hurt? So much, hey. Yeah, you scared us. It was the scariest blue bottle sting I've ever seen. <laughs> I was just telling Jasmine she's the toughest girl I've ever met. She's been a very brave girl. Brave and tough as nails. <laughs> Are you going to show everyone, though, that you're a brave girl and you can come back in the water now? Yeah. Come in the water yeah. with me. Come on, then. Yeah. What a legend. I thought you have to go back in the water because otherwise we're here for five weeks. Right. So if we don't, if she doesn't get overcome her fear to get in the water now, she'll, miss out on the she'll ruin, yeah, bless her. Now Jasmine's painful experience is about to come in very handy. You got stung by a jellyfish? Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh. Jasmine got stung yesterday. Did you get stung by jellyfish? Yeah. When? Yeah. It hurts, huh? When did you do it? Hurts a lot? When did yeah. you do it? Just got there. I was getting into the water. How long did the phone last? I'll go and get out there. Not long. Not long? Nah. Half an hour? Yeah. Half an hour. Ha happy ending for uh, Jasmine. Happy ending for, for all of us. So, yeah, she can go on and go on in Australia and, uh, Let's have a good time. By like coming back down the beach, she's getting back on the horse, you know. Full props to you, Jasmine. In the tower, word comes through on Leo, the young Brazilian with no feeling in his arms or legs. Team, the police, um, on no police, Frank. Yeah. And they said that guy yesterday for the spinal. Yep. He's quad. Quadriplegic. Yeah. yeah. He just called to say, like, a, let us know. 
It's been a week since 28-year-old Brazilian dancer Leo dived headfirst into a sandbank. You can't do anything. Tell him to move his feet. You can't. He was left with no movement in his arms or legs. Now, his friends have come to visit lifeguards in the tower. What actually happened, Timmy? He jumped for a dive, and it wasn't dead. The, the, the accident was actually after. He started to dive. And oh, now it's dying. Oh, yeah. Like oh, okay. Yeah. We decided to go for a swim. We went for a run to dive into the water. And then we just realized that as we swim, we will go up and start to walk back. On the look back, he's still under the water. One of the boys tried to pick him up. And um, he's realized that he wouldn't come. Yeah. So then he turned him around. And he was like, breathe, like struggling to breathe. It was such a beautiful day. We, it's so funny because we got up. I, I got up and I went to their house and we got there. We make breakfast and we feel positive. Like, let's go for a big workout. Let's go to the beach and and our vibe, our energy was so good that day. What I wanted to ask was, what's uh, Leandro's future prospects? Like, where is it at? It's a one percent chance of his recovery ever being able to move his arms or legs again. But they also did say to us that there was the same slim chance of me, him being able to recover his breathing, which he has. He's completely breathing on his own. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. He has recovered incredibly rapidly yeah. In, yeah. in that respect. So, you know, we have hope. But obviously it's going to be a long-term recovery process, treatment, rehabilitation, care. So there's a lot of costs involved. It's, it's really hard for us to go to the hospital and see him because when he get there, he keep looking at us. Yeah. He keep telling me how, how good I look. Yeah. And he kept, keep asking me to buy him some protein shake, like yeah. supplements. Yeah. 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 Like he's believing in his mind that he's gonna be okay soon. He's a, he's a very um, spiritual, positive person. It's very sad. It's one of the, one of the, probably the worst things I've had to deal with <laughs> in my lifeguarding career. Oh, really? He's such a beautiful yeah. big guy. Yeah. And I knew. And it was just, and he knew, I could see him on the beach, he had these tears in his eyes, it was just. Yeah, one thing it does definitely give you the biggest wake up call and you feel like I can, every single step I take, I should be thankful for The fact that I can scratch my eye if it's itching, you know, you just got to give thanks for every single moment that we're healthy.